Before we move on to the next section, I want to highlight one change I made between the last video and this one. Um, you'll see it up here when I come to the lever. I basically made a new camera spot for uh, the special camera, which is the close-up camera. And every time I open something or switch a lever, that camera switches and shows something new, um, like these doors opening. So. If you want to know how I accomplished it specifically, consider it homework and uh, figure it out yourself. You can look at the objects and the scripts and you'll see that it's pretty much straightforward. Um, but I just wanted to highlight that before going forward. Alright, we're setting up the mushroom monster now as part of the scenes for the enemy. So I've put them down here in this enemy section. I've added a nav mesh agent uh, with the size equal to about the width of the head. Um, that way they'll have trouble going through small doorways like this one. Um, and uh, I've also added a rigid body. I froze the rotation on the X and the Z so that he doesn't tumble over. Uh, and I have added a capsule collider and set the layer to enemy. Um, that way when the player attacks it'll search for enemies in the desired range. Um, on the animator I've added a locomotion layer with just the idle and the walk, uh, 0 to 1, very simple there. We have a walk backwards animation, mushroom attack 2 which is actually a cast animation, a uh, mushroom attack 3 which is a melee animation, mushroom squash we're going to use for when the mushroom uh, dodges an attack, and death and got hit of course. So. Uh, most of these are just triggers, the attack, cast, dodge, death, and got hit. But the mushroom walk back is, is going to activate when the uh, player is too close. Actually, I just noticed one mistake here. It's only going to activate from, um, from the locomotion tab. So when, when we're in locomotion, if the player is too close, then we'll activate walk backwards. And then when the player is not too close, we'll go back to locomotion. The reason being is that I want the, the mushroom to kind of want to uh, uh, get away a little bit when the player gets really close to him. It makes it a little bit more difficult for the player because they do have to actively move forward in order to attack and time the attack properly. But it also adds realism. Uh, I think for in many fights, enemies shouldn't just stand there and wait to get hit. They should actually actively walk, walk away or, or, or hedge their bets and scoop back a little bit. So that's a slightly different animation from the rest so we'll save that there set the transition on uh, locomotion to mushroom walk back to having no exit time for both directions uh, that way when the boolean is triggered it will happen right away unless it's doing another attack um, so I added on the mushroom two scripts uh, the look at target script which is one that comes with most of our packages uh, and it basically will just have the mushroom rotate to look at the um, uh, the target which is the human player in this case and it does so smoothly you can check out that script if you like it's it's commented there um, and the other script I just added is walk back from target this is going to look for a target um, and it takes a target a distance distance is how close the player can get the target can get to the uh, object uh, check timer is how often it will check fix for height um, if you've got a situation where maybe the player is like on a um, a uh, slight rise above uh, the difference between their their distances is going to be longer at an angle than it would be at a flat so if uh, the fix for height is checked then it will uh, equalize the Y variables for their each of their uh, positions and you will get the um, difference in uh, the distance only from the top-down view regardless of how tall either one is um, and the boolean name is for the animator, what animator uh, boolean name you use. So basically, uh, it's going to invoke repeating at the start check distance, this, this function, every check timer time. So in this case, every uh, one-tenth of a second or ten times a second is going to check for the distance. Uh, I do that just to, I figure it doesn't need to check every frame. Um, it, we don't need that type of accuracy. So um, we could probably even make this a little less, maybe every... Uh, five times a second or something, um, depending on how, how snappy you want the reaction to be in the game. Um, uh, so basically we're, we're fixing, um, if we're fixing the height we just make uh, the Y position zero on each of these and then we check 
the it, the distance. If it's if it's less than the distance we have uh, set, then we set the boolean to true, otherwise to false. And that just runs all the time. So let's check that out. Now we should notice. Yep, the mushrooms rotating to us, and then if we get too close, it walks backwards. I'm going to add some scripts to the mushroom monster here. Uh, if you watch me in the scene view, you should see the sight vision right now is set to 12, so when this value, the current distance, gets to uh, less than 12, he'll see the player, and then he'll start moving towards him. There we go, and then he does a range attack at uh, between 5 and 7, and if we get closer, then he'll come towards and do the melee attack. Uh, if he's between the melee distance 2.8 and 5, he'll walk forward in order to do the melee attack. Otherwise, if he's got that distance, then he'll do the uh, cast attack. And if he's far enough away, then he will walk towards us. Right now, he's just a little bit too far because now he can't see me. So, let me get a little closer. And then he'll stop and do the cast match. Now, no, none of this does anything besides the animation right now. And you can see there's an animation event on my thing already. But uh, So ignore that. Let's just go through the scripts and see what I've changed here. First, with the look at target, I add a, a new thing here. Turn off with nav. Uh, if this is set to true, then when there's a navigation, uh, uh, only look at the player or target, rather, when the nav mesh agent is not enabled. That way the navigation can uh, control the rotation of the character. Um, and let's see, nav mesh agent, we don't need to do anything about that. I think that's fine. Um, the collider I made to be as wide as the mushroom head. Um, I might make it a little smaller. Uh, all right, and so enemy movement script. Now, as always, there's likely a better way to do this. There's probably many ways to do this. Um, this is, uh, I wanted to be able to use the nav, the nav mesh uh, and also um, control the range and melee attack distances. So um, we cache the values for these various things here, and then we invoke repeating at the start check for attack. Um, and we also make sure at the start that the nav mesh agent is not updating the position. That means that the position of the character will only be uh, updated through root motion, which is what we, we want for these. Um, so check for attack does, first it checks to see if, if the character can range attack, and then if so, if it's within the range distance between the uh, minimum range and the maximum range. And if so, it will do the range attack. If it can't do that, then it's going to check to see if it can melee attack, and if so, it's going to check to see if it's within the melee distance, and if so, it'll do the melee attack. If not, then it's going to move to target as long as it's within sight distance. If it's above sight distance, it won't do anything, it'll just chill and sit and not just care about anything, I suppose. Um, uh, then it will move to the target. So let's look at that first. Move to target will first cancel the check for attack. Um, we don't want them checking for attack in the middle of the motion. Uh, we want to check for attack only when we're close enough to attack. Um, um, so we're going to enable the nav mesh agent and set the destination to the uh, uh, player's position. Um, during the update loop, we have this attack when close function. It's called every frame. And if we are not invoking check for attack, which we just canceled when we started moving, then every frame we're going to check to see if we're close enough. If we're close enough, either within the range distance or within the melee distance, we're going to quickly uh, we're going to check for attack immediately. Uh, that's zero right here, and we're invoking the repeating uh, function again for check for attack. Um, that way, it will stop the the uh, navigation because on both melee and range attack, we disable the navig nav mesh agent. Uh, and it will do set the trigger for the range or melee attack. 
Uh, the other thing we do here is send nav mesh data to animator. Um, if the nav mesh is enabled, which means we're actually walking, uh, then we're going to set the locomotion to uh, the desired veloc uh, velocity of the nav mesh. Even though it's not updating the position, it knows how fast it wants to move. Um, otherwise, if the navigation is not enabled or uh, the current distance is uh, less than the melee distance, um, then we're going to uh, set the locomotion to zero. We're going to move it slowly so that it uh, doesn't stop on a dime, um, but we're going to move the, mo uh, the motion to zero. The only other thing that this function does is the fixed nav mesh agent position, um, and this is a new thing for, I think, 5 Unity 5. Um, the position of the nav mesh agent is not always the same as the position of the character. And so this basically keeps the nav mesh agent position to be the same as the character position. That's all the script does right now. Um, it might look a little bit more complicated to uh, to relatively new Unity users or programmers than it does uh, to me, and there's certainly better ways to do that. I can't say that enough. There's a million ways to do everything uh, in Unity. This is just one of them. It works for this so far. I might adjust it as we go forward. The next step will be to actually um, get some colliders and hitboxes on the characters and the players so that we can actually start fighting for real. Uh, but this is a, a good step, so let's leave this here for now.